Hello my friends, and it's your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. This is a home workout for beginners video to introduce people to getting healthy, fit, and strong at home. It's a simple way for people to get started into a fitness routine that doesn't require a lot of equipment, trains their whole body, and scales to their ability. So you can start at almost any fitness level. It's designed to be an adaptable program that changes as you get stronger so you can continue to make results and progress for years and years and years, really the rest of your life. You can use this to get stronger, build mobility, get more muscular, and lose or gain weight depending on how you eat and some other things you do. Some of you already know this information, especially if you already do the hybrid routine. This is actually a remake of the very first video I posted on my YouTube channel. But I want to update it with better information, better quality, make it more accessible. So if you already know this or you're not the target audience, then feel free to just share with a friend who might need it. I just want an easy place to explain the entire start of the routine so people can get started fast within a few minutes. So we'll cover the exercise variations first, what we're training. Pushing, pulling, legs, bridges, twists, and leg raises. And then we'll show you a routine and schedule so you can know when or how to do them. And also some ideas on how to warm up. Basically, you're going to find an exercise variation in this video that you can do comfortably and safely, train it a few times a week until you're strong enough to move on. And we'll give you a standard of sets and reps that you can try to hit every workout so you have a better idea on when to move on. All this information and more is available on our website for free. More on that later. Let's get started. Okay, the first exercise is wall push-ups, and for that you will need a wall, as the name implies. These are very expensive if you buy them attached to houses, but if you're lucky enough you might have access to a free one like this. And this one's nice because I can show you from the side view how the exercise looks. Now, the first thing that a lot of people say is that these are too easy for them, even if they haven't exercised in a while. And while most people will be able to do these relatively easily, I find this is a worthwhile exercise because most people are used to doing harder exercises where they can't really fine tune their form. But with this one, you can see, hmm, I want to tighten my core a little bit here so my back isn't sagging as you see in a lot of push-ups. Hmm, my shoulder blades feel a little better if I let them retract and protract naturally. That's a personal preference. Some people like keeping the shoulder blades back the whole time. I am gonna talk while I do these because there are plenty of videos on the website where I'm just doing these quietly. The next thing that people might notice is where you place your hands on the wall does matter. If your hands are too close together, you might find that you might feel more pressure on your elbows than strictly necessary for this step. See, if your hands are close together, look at my elbows, and if they're further apart, they usually don't have to bend quite as much. The same if your hands are too high on the wall. See, mine are approximately shoulder height, but if I have them here, it's almost like a tricep extension, and your elbows might have to work a little bit harder than they otherwise would need to at this step. But if you have them too low, you might feel, see my wrist here? You might feel some pain in the wrist. So much so that some people prefer to do these on their fingertips, like so, on their fists, with some cushion if they need to, like this, or just have their hands turned out like this. Some people like that. Personally, I think you should have them relatively straight, like so, because you're gonna need that for future steps. So just find a good height at which to do these, where you can kind of feel them in your wrist, because you wanna strengthen your wrist for the future steps, but not so much bend that you have to work through wrist pain. The gold standard for these is three sets of 50 wall push-ups with good form and without pain. That's what I always mean. And how that will work is you will do three sets of as many as you can or 50, whichever one is lower. And once you're able to do three sets of 50 with good form and without pain, you're ready to move on to a harder variation. And the next step is incline push-ups. You can do them like this. Leaning a little bit further like this makes the exercise harder. The lower the object, usually the harder this exercise is. I usually recommend starting with something around sternum height, which as you can see is significantly higher than what I have here. But I wanna encourage people to use what they have. And chances are, if I find something around sternum height, you're not gonna have access to that exact thing. A fence might work, a gate, a railing, pretty much anything stable and safe and won't break or shatter, nothing glass. And if you can't find something exact, you might have to experiment. For example, spreading your legs like this, having a wider stance, will also make this a little bit easier. So you can fine tune these steps to your preference. So I'll put the goal standards somewhere on this video and in the description so you can view them at your convenience. I'm gonna show about two progressions per exercise, per movement in this video. For this one, if you wanna see the rest of the progressions, it's at hybridcalisthenics.com slash pushups. Again, all of this is part of our free online routine. You can view that whenever you want. This video is just to help explain the concepts and help you get started. Okay, moving on to pulling, we have, once again, wall pull-ups. Unlike wall push-ups, we don't explicitly have a wall here to show you with. However, it can be done on some walls, but usually people do them on a pole or a tree. Once again, 
anything stable. And once again, this gets a lot of accusations of being too easy. And this is a little bit easier than wall push-ups. I'll give you an idea in a second. But this is also, once again, a good way to practice your pulling motion. When you think about pulling, do you think, hmm, where are my shoulder blades? Hmm, how tight do I have to make my core? Am I too tense some places? Is my head back? Is my head forward? Some of these things don't necessarily matter, but it's a good thing to practice your pulling motion, which a lot of people don't, because when they exercise, the exercise is either very hard or a motion they're not familiar with. So they never get a chance to really know the exercise. You may notice, depending on what you use, that it might be harder to hold onto as you get further away. While this is not necessarily bad to train your grip strength, because you will need it later on, you don't want something too slippery to where that is a harder exercise itself. Some people hold it like this, which gets too hard as you get further away. So you might want something you can grip onto easily. Also, depending on what you use, at the very top, you might not be able to feel tension because you're basically just standing up. So if you can find something slightly slanted forward to where you can maintain tension on your back and on your arms throughout the exercise, that might be ideal for this. Once again, many ways to do this exercise, but the general rule of thumb is to have your shoulder blades back and down and pull like that. However, some people choose after they do that to relax at the very bottom so they're getting a little bit more range of motion. A handy variation that you may want to try if you don't have something that can give you a little bit of an incline is to use a strap or a towel, just anything once again secure that you can use. And this solves some of the issues people have where they feel it's too easy, also gives them a little bit more of an incline. However, I wouldn't really consider this a different exercise, just a different variation of the first one. Some people will complain that the grip is not perfect. Ideally, you'd want it to where you can hold it like this, but at this level of intensity, it's usually fine. And by the way, just like with push-ups, there are small micro progressions you can use, like spreading your legs like this to make it a little bit easier, adjusting the height of where you have the strap, if you're using a strap, might change the emphasis on your muscles and or make it easier or more difficult. So you can experiment. So the next exercise is a horizontal pull-up. I usually show these on gym rings, but I know not everyone has them. So I wanna show you how I would do them on a railing. I'm only gonna do part of it at this angle so you can actually see what's happening. But as you can see, it's pretty common for people to find a railing. It's not quite the right height. As you can see, because of how high this is, this is like about collarbone height, I almost have to have my arms almost parallel to the ground, my upper arms parallel to the ground in order to actually pull, or I could try pulling like this, but I, neither one is really ideal for the pull-up movement. And if you're facing a similar situation to this, you're not alone, let me show you an idea. As you can see, we don't have the perfect setup. This is how it looks from the side, but once again, most people will not have the perfect setup, so I wanna be somewhat realistic with this. So what I've done is I've gotten some straps. You can use some straps if you have them in your garage, maybe some rope, even a towel that you can tie up, anything secure like you can hold yourself like this so while you can adjust the height of the railing you can adjust the height at which you grab it like this and there you go this is a little bit more of a natural feeling you can see it's still a little bit too high so I can adjust my feet like this and this feels pretty good now some of you will be tempted to just loop something around and grab it like this. And while that can work, there's nothing explicitly wrong with that. You might find that as you get lower, it's harder and harder to grip like this. So finding something to where you can grab like this, even a ring, you can make your own gym rings. We have a tutorial for that. will make this a lot easier for you. Again, all this information and more is on our free online web routine at hybridcalisthenics.com routine, or you can simply search hybrid routine and it usually comes up or hybrid fitness routine. If you want to get a physical copy we have a book version. I really appreciate everyone who's gotten it. It's meant a lot that a lot of people like the book and are giving it to friends. This has all the exercises, all the information, all the tutorials. Some people just like to have a physical book version of the routine that they can easily reference and can lay flat if it's the spiral one so they can see it while they're exercising. If you need help or have questions, we currently have a support board at support.hypercalisthenics.com where our team can help answer your questions. Or if you want, you can go into our community in the comments on our Discord or our Facebook group where you can ask the community for help and see other people's results. Okay, next we're gonna move on to legs and we're gonna do squats. And our first progression is jackknife squats, like so. I usually show them on some type of stool or box around knee height and where you can push yourself up at the very bottom. However, here I have a railing. First of all, because I wanna encourage people to experiment and use what they have and not get too bound in the specifics. Like, wow, I don't even have the hybrid calisthenics officially branded first edition gym rings. 
Why even try? A kingdom for a gym ring. Not a set of gym rings. You need two kingdoms for that, unless they're on sale. So I want people to use what they have, but the second part is a railing is nice because you can hold onto it if it's secure, which it should be at the very bottom. Some people have mentioned that during jackknife squats, if they're only trying to push up at the very bottom, they fall back, sometimes due to limited ankle mobility. And there are different ways you can work around that. But for now, if you just hold onto something, you can lean back with a railing without falling back like so. Now we have some other videos about ankle mobility, but a quick way you can work around that is you do your regular squats, three sets of as many as you can, and drop down into the bottom of the squat. And if you have some trouble, you usually almost fall back like this, but try to hold on and just kind of pull yourself into a deep squat. Just assist yourself or don't go far enough to where you feel pain in your ankles and just hold that for time, approximately three sets of 30 seconds just to get started at the end of your squat workout. That way you can work your squats and your legs can get stronger, and then afterwards you have some time, just a little bit, to work on ankle mobility to where you can eventually do a full deep body weight squat like so. Okay, the next step is assisted squats. I'm not gonna spend too long on these because they're very similar to jackknife squats. The only difference is supposed to be that you're supposed to pull at the bottom of assisted squats, and at the bottom of jackknife squats, you're supposed to be pushing. However, as we discussed before, if you lean back a little bit like you can do with these, then the difference is a little bit harder to quantify, except that your base of support is a little bit higher. Now, one thing that you might want to try, some people might want to try, is if you want to simulate the balance that you would need for a regular full deep body weight squat like this, then you might want, to, if you have gym rings, you can use those, or some rope right here, or some way where you can just grab on either side of you so you're perfectly in between. You're not grabbing something in front, grabbing something in front of you, sorry, on top of you, grabbing something above you. <laughs> that would simulate a real deep body weight squat a little bit more if you grab something like this. Or a slight progression that you can try, a way to make it slightly harder or adjust the difficulty, is you can bring yourself a little bit closer to how you're squatting, to where you're not really leaning that much on your base of support. That makes it a little bit more similar to an actual squat compared to going like this. But once again, start with what you can. Okay, and now we're going down to the ground to work our midsection, really, but people get more excited when I say work our core, and they get even more excited when I say work our abs. So we're gonna be doing leg raises, but it's really more than an ab workout. It works your entire midsection, but they look about like this. And also, I'm never completely certain whether I should face this way or face the other way. You wouldn't think there's a difference, but when I'm editing these and watching back, I'm like, ah, I should have faced the other way. But anyway, get it? Anyway, <laughs> we usually have people start with knee raises, which looks like this. They were originally done with these. And believe it or not, I left my shoes on accidentally here, but they can actually make a difference, especially when you're starting off. It's a little bit easier to do without shoes. Anytime you weight something further away from you, it has a bigger effect. So even though these are light, especially if you're starting off, they can make a difference. And there's a few different ways to do these. I believe they were originally done with your body straight like this. Then you lift your heels off the ground and you bring your knees to you and slowly go back. For all of these, try to keep the motion nice and smooth. With these especially, the idea is to exhale on the way up and inhale on the way down. And that exhalation will tense your core a little bit more. But the reason not everyone does it like this for the first step is because it's understandably a little bit hard. It's pretty difficult towards the bottom here, not so much when it's up here. So it's perfectly fine if you wanna start like this. But for this exercise in particular, I'm gonna go ahead and show the next progression, which is just straightening out your knees a little bit more like this. Advanced knee raises. All we're doing is going from approximately a 90 degree bend to approximately a 45 degree bend like this. I know it's hard to maintain exactly the same degree, exactly the same angle, but that's the idea. Also, while I'm teaching this, this is <laughs> one of the side effects of talking while I exercise. My neck is up so I can see you, but while you're doing these, feel free to have the back of your head on the ground like this. It might let you focus a little bit more, a little bit less strain on your neck. Okay, now let's get into some troubleshooting and some variations. If you ever see me holding this, this is the remote I use to operate the camera. So just small things. But you learn, or I learn a lot of things making content and interacting with our wonderful community. And one of the questions I've gotten is, Hampton, when you do leg raises, which by the way, you're eventually supposed to do with your legs straight. If you haven't figured it out, 
The more you bend, generally the easier it is, and the less you bend, the harder it is. So eventually the goal is to go like this, and then you can do them hanging and so on. But I've been asked, why don't you have your arms up here and do leg raises like this, especially since that's pretty much how you're going to be when you're doing these hanging. And you can kind of hear my voice is a little bit different while I'm doing those. And it's a good question, but I've always found this to be a little bit more stable at first, and later on I get my overhead mobility from other exercises. But if you've been taught that, I just didn't want there to be too much confusion. Either one is fine, in my opinion. Now, some troubleshooting. A lot of people say for leg raises, so much so that they might even skip them, there's some lower back pain they get. And there are different causes for lower back pain. In this case, it's often from some sort of lower back tightness where it's arched. So a small temporary solution would be to put a small rolled up towel like this, not huge, that might make it worse, but just small, a few inches, small towel or pillow underneath your lower back like so. And it might temporarily give you some relief as you're doing these exercises. If you don't have that or you wanna be even more minimalist, some people have some success putting their hands underneath their lower back like so. In fact, this is a little bit more stable for me. My towel might have been a little bit too high, but some people work like that. But that is a short-term solution. Now, short-term in this case isn't necessarily bad because it allows you to do this exercise and have a more complete exercise routine without having to skip it or anything like that. But some people may find some benefit after doing this exercise or whenever integrated into their routine to stretch their hip flexors. We do this with our next exercise section, which is bridges, but some people do them through things like lunges, which also work. Stretching your hip flexors can sometimes help if you have tight hip flexors and your pelvis is tilted forward and it's putting extra strain on your lower back. And it might be especially important to do in this case because as you can see, as I mentioned, this isn't just about your abs, you're also working your hip flexors like that, which I think is very helpful to be able to train the front of your legs and your hips and your core at the same time. However, you don't want them to only be tight, you want them to also be mobile. So once again, the importance of a balanced routine. And lastly, for now, I'm spending some extra time troubleshooting this exercise because I know a lot of people have questions about it. Lastly, for now, if none of those ideas work for you for whatever reason, you might wanna get it checked out, but a temporary solution might be to do these as static exercises, isometrically. So instead of moving up and down, you find something you can reasonably comfortably hold without pain and just hold for time. So something like this might be a little bit harder. If that's too hard, you can bend your knees. You notice that makes it easier. Or raise your legs, which makes it a little bit easier as well. Or you can mix these. It is important to learn to move and have dynamic exercises, but I'd rather you have some type of variation rather than just skipping it. Real quick, before I move on, throughout all these variations, if possible, I would like you to have your lower back touching the ground. Some people arch up like this, and I know sometimes it's hard or impossible at the moment for you to touch your lower back to the ground. And if so, and or it hurts, you can use one of the solutions or workarounds that we just talked about. But if possible, if your lower back can touch the ground and keep contact to the ground throughout the movement, that might help you benefit from this exercise a little bit more. Okay, moving on to bridges. We're going to work the back of our body almost like the opposite of a leg raise. We want balance and eventually full bridges will become a great mobility exercise and standard. These exercises won't take as long to explain now because some of the things we talked about in previous exercises really apply to the whole workout routine. So we're gonna start with short bridges, also called glute bridges, but I learned them as short bridges and they look like this. Once again, you can do them with your hands up like this. Might have a little bit more transfer to the later exercises, whatever works best for you. This exercise is sometimes taught with a tight core, almost like pressing your lower back to the ground, like in leg raises, and keeping that as you go up. And when you do this, I recommend trying it at least a few times, you can really feel it in your glutes and not so much in your lower back, which is a fine way to do these and you're still working all the muscles and all the parts that you need for this exercise and you'll still be able to progress to the harder variations, but a slightly different variation. If you don't do that and instead you press your hips up, I find this is a little bit closer to the feeling of a full bridge or wheel bridge because you're contracting pretty much your entire back, including lower back, your glutes, hamstrings a bit, everything to bring yourself up. Now, if that hurts your lower back, then yes, split the difference or do the other variation. But this is one way where I can get a little bit of extra flexibility in my hips while still working the short bridge. Now, I should mention that is a little bit controversial. Not everyone believes that. So feel free to do whatever variation and whatever tweak works the best for you. Okay, after you hit the gold standard for short bridges, glute bridges, you can move on to straight bridges. They just look like this. 
I've noticed this is where a lot of people stop. They are working through the bridge progression and they either stop here or they skip it. So give me your feedback on this. This is a harder variation of a bridge that works the back of your body, but some people may have some wrist pain here, in which case you can just do these on your fists like this, or they just have some kind of mobility issue where they don't wanna do these. This is definitely one where you might wanna film yourself, you don't have to show anyone, and watch back to see your form, because this one is a little bit hard to see what's going on. And in fact, when you're looking up, because if you don't, it kinda of looks like this, which seems strained and kinda of feels strained. But when you lean back like this, you can't really see your body at all. I can see my nose, and I think a little bit of my cheekbones. Probably not, maybe just my nose. And just like the previous exercise, you can stop when you go straight, but contrary to the name, you can bend a little bit further up, so your boat up a little bit, like so, and get that extra mobility benefit if you can do it without pain. And by the way, if you're wondering, yes, the difference between this and the leg raise location is about 30 feet, we were over there, I moved it so we can look different, and I faced the other direction, and when we did straight bridges, I zoomed out and tilted up a little bit. Master filmographer. In all seriousness, I do hope you all are enjoying this and can benefit from it at least a little bit. And finally, we have some twists, which can help us build some mobility by stretching some things that really aren't stretched that often, and also can help train our rotation, which is a fundamental movement for us. I am gonna show these at a 45 degree angle. I hope that's not too wild for anyone. It's gonna be 45 degrees, but I think you can better see the movement this way. Okay, there are some differences in how we'll progress. I'll talk about them in a bit. But first, our first variation involves us bringing our knee up like this, over, and just turn this way. And hold for time. It's not a movement, it's a hold, and you turn just about as hard as you safely can. Don't try to force it. Don't use momentum like this. Slowly ease yourself into it. If you feel some pain, you can back off a little bit. Think of this as a mobility exercise or a stretch more so than a pure strength exercise. So an important difference in how we'll progress with twists or any kind of mobility or similar exercise is in the previous exercises, we have goal standards. And once you can hit those, you move on to a harder progression. However, with twists, we can always hold for a similar amount of time, say 30 seconds, 60 seconds, depending on what you want to do. However, you don't move on after you can do 60 seconds. You turn and you stretch, and when you're able to do the next exercise, the next progression, that's when you can move on, when you can do it comfortably and safely. So for example, the next progression would involve you bending your other knee like this, hand over, elbow next to your knee like so, and turning like this. And the other side would just look like this. It's okay if you can't quite get that, if you feel like your knee needs to be out a little bit, if you need to adjust, the point of the stretch is just really the stretch. As long as your form is close, I find most students get it over time as they fine tune. While you're holding, you can breathe evenly. Some people actually, instead of counting time, they count their breaths, which can also work. You'll find sometimes when you exhale, you can actually go deeper into the stretch, but you don't have to consciously do that. For example, if I were exaggerating a little bit, so even a static exercise like this, where you're not supposed to move, has some subtle movement because you're breathing. And of course, the next step, since there's only about three here, I'll put my mic here, is putting your hand through your legs and holding your own hand. Holding your own hand. Hello, my friend. Here's how it looks from the other side. You might find that you have one side that's a little bit tighter or a little bit more flexible than the other. That's pretty normal. You can stretch that side first, and twist will help you even out this imbalance which is pretty cool. Twists are a great exercise that are often skipped or underestimated and sometimes considered bad because some people say rotation is bad. Rotation is a fundamental human movement. We do have muscles that help us rotate. Twists can help us with that, but also help us be able to resist rotation when we need to, which is also important. If and when you hear that rotation is bad for you, at least part of the time it's referencing loaded rotation. So if you're holding 100, 200, 300 pounds and you're rotating, that may be bad for you. But this is unloaded because you're not carrying any extra weight and it's a great exercise for many people. Okay, next we're gonna organize these exercises 
exercises into a set routine. Having a set schedule like this is almost always better than doing these exercises when you feel like it because you get used to doing it at a certain time and this can really help you drive some growth. On Monday, we're going to do push-ups and leg raises. Tuesday, pull-ups and squats. Wednesday, bridges and twists. And on Thursday, this will repeat. Now, some of you may have noticed that we're doing these exercises twice a week now rather than once a week in our original routine. That one that we had originally let people experiment and have plenty of rest, especially when they're starting out to try different things. However, there was a request to do these exercises more frequently, and as long as you're getting enough rest and you're healing, then you're also making progress faster. Keep in mind, the exercises, for example, push-ups, refers to the progression. So it can be anything from wall push-ups to one-arm push-ups, same for the other exercises. Doing these once a week can be a good way to start, but eventually you can move on to twice a week if you choose. And there's more at hypercalisthenics.com programs if you want to know more. Okay, my friend, those are the exercises. I hope they can work well for you. If you want to warm up for them, that's a common question we get. As you can see, most of them are fairly gentle and low impact, so some people may not need to warm up. However, if you choose, you can simply do a overall warm up where you get limbered up and you literally warm up your body temperature with something like jumping jacks or running in place. If you want to do a little bit more, you can follow that with a specific warm up by doing one of the exercises but only going about half of your regular capacity. For example, if you can usually do around 50 wall push ups, you can do about 25 before your regular set and simply rest before you get into your regular workout. All this information and more is available on our free online routine at hybridcalisthenics.com slash routine. There's a book version if you want it, and an app version is coming soon, hopefully later this year. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Have a beautiful day, my friend.